Hi everyone. In this video we're going to explore the topic of orthographic projection. Orthographic projection is a means of communication. It allows anybody in the world to communicate a design regardless of language barriers or geographical distance. We can communicate the design of an object, be that a building, a house, a car, a motorbike, a medical device or some handy gadget for around the, the home. We can communicate the design of our object to anybody in the world as long as they have also studied the topic or something similar. They will be able to read our drawings, see our design details and manufacture the product in some cases. In this first lesson we're going to start off with something very basic. We're going to take a 3D object, so just a box of these uh, extra long safety matches. We'll take this three dimensional object. We're going to produce multiple views of this object, looking in at all of the important faces of the object to show as much detail as we need to show to communicate everything that's happening with this matchbox. All of these views will be laid out on our A3 page and once we have the views complete and laid out we're going to have a look at the basis for this topic where it all comes from and why it's so important for now we'll just have a quick look at solidworks and what we can see here on solidworks what we can see here on solidworks is three flat surfaces or planes now for anyone that's used to seeing solid works, it starts off with three planes. It starts off itself with a front plane, a top plane, and a right plane. These planes are an unlimited size. They can be extremely small if you happen to be drawing, let's just say a stint, a medical device, a little stint. They can be really small if you were drawing a calculator that happened to be a bit bigger. If you were drawing a house, they're going to be much, much larger. A plane is a flat surface. That is it. It's a flat surface that we can produce a drawing on. So, when we move on now, and this was what we'd see in our interface on SolidWorks, was our front, top and right, well, the terminology changes. What we're working with is this. We're working with the vertical plane and the horizontal plane. The vertical plane is like a wall of a room, and the horizontal plane will be like the floor. When we're looking at the two planes, we can see them as two edges. We can see the vertical plane or the wall as an edge view, and we can see the floor as an edge. Now I'll just turn that back for a moment, and I'm going to drop in one extra plane over here in blue. So what we're looking at right now, we're basically looking at the corner of a room with a vertical wall here on the left in green, with a vertical wall here on the right in blue, and with the red floor. Now, the terms that we use for them, on the wall here, the primary main wall of this room is called the vertical plane, and we usually shorten that and call it the VP. Next would be the floor, which we call the horizontal plane, and again, usually shortened to HP. Now, this is also vertical. It stands straight up from the ground in a vertical position, in a vertical orientation. It is also a vertical plane, so we just need to differentiate between the two. We call this one the end vertical plane. And again, always shortened to EVP. So, to keep everything organised, we start off with our three planes. We have our main wall in green there, the vertical plane, the VP. We have our floor, which is in red, the horizontal plane, HP. And we have our second vertical wall, the EVP in the vertical plane. Then we take our three-dimensional three object, which is our matchbox, and we drop it in there. Now, once the matchbox is in, the matchbox can be in any position on our planes. We can see, and I have a good idea here, it's a little bit away from the wall, it's a little bit away from the end wall as well, and it's sitting flat down on the ground. 
our next job is to produce the views of this object. So when we look at the object head on and we just look straight in towards the vertical plane, this is the surface that we can see. So if I hit the space bar on my keyboard, I can look directly in at the front and the view of the object that we can see is a two dimensional view. So the object itself is three dimensional and we are going to create multiple views of the object and each view is going to be 2D, two dimensional. In this case here, we can see the length of the object and we can see the height of the object. And exactly what we can see in this position is projected through the object and back onto the plane. So if I scroll down one step, you can barely see the outline of the object there forming in, in the black detail line. And if I just turn this to a slightly three-dimensional view, we can see that the, what we were able to see from the front of the object has been pushed back and has been embossed onto the face or onto the vertical plane. Now, the name for this view is called an elevation. So anyone that might have seen, well, what, what's called a house drawings or house plans, there's one view called elevations. So it's where you're looking at the front of your house or the side of your house and you can see the vertical faces. That's always called your elevations. So this view right here that's on the vertical plane is called our elevation. And just to recap once more, it is what can be seen as we look straight in at the front of the object. It is the face of the object that gives us the most detail and shows us the most information about it. Moving on from there. The next one we're going to do is looking down from the top of the object. So if this was a building, maybe you'd have to go into the helicopter, go up in the air and see down. Another very common name that people give this is a bird's eye view. So if you're looking from the top of the object, looking straight down. So looking down at the top of this box of matches, you, we should be able to see all of the text, the extra long safety matches and all the details on the top cover here. But more importantly, we see the outline of the object. And again, it's, it's 2D. We can see the length, we can see the depth, but we cannot establish the height from here. We had the height up in our main elevation, but we don't have it down here in our next view. And this view is called the plan. Now, if I just scroll down one step, the plan just drops in there around the outline. Hard to see it there. If I move it around to 3D, I think we can see the plan exactly what the top of this object looks like where it goes down and it hits the horizontal plane. Finally, we want to look in at this end of the object. At this moment we actually have all three dimensions. We have the total length, we have the height and we have the depth. So we, we should at this stage have all the information that is necessary figure out what this three-dimensional object looks like. If I hit it right now on screen, we should know what it is. But to give us some more information, and maybe when we get onto some more complex parts, we're going to need more than just two views. But for a little bit more information, we're going to look straight in at this face right here. So to do that, again I'll hit my spacebar, and I'm going to look in at that face. And this time we see a two-dimensional view again. We cannot figure out the overall length of the object from this view, but we can see the width or the depth here, and we can see the height standing up along here. So we project that view, we take it and we press it straight over and project it onto the end vertical plane, and it looks like that. So now we have our three views of the object. We have our elevation looking in from the front of the object, projected onto my vertical plane. We have the plan looking down on top of the object, projected onto the horizontal plane. And we have an end elevation looking in from the left in this case, and it's projected over onto the end vertical plane. Now, what some people might be thinking is, why is the end vertical plane on the right? There's absolutely no reason that it would be on the right this time. It could also be on the left, and we'd be looking in the opposite way. And it would be no problem, there'd be no difference in this case here. In most questions, it's specified. We're told whether we're going to look in from the left, thus putting the plane in the right, or if we're going to view from the right and put the plane here on the left. Usually, we're given that information. Now, if I just wanted to move this on a little bit further, 
we can't draw that on paper as it is right now because it's 3D. It's a big solid object and it's three big planes and it's all three dimensional. We have to figure out now how we're going to take this selection of views and actually arrange them on our A3 page. So the first thing I'm going to do is, but we're not all going to have this box of matches, so I'm going to hide it. We don't have that. And the next thing we want to try and figure out now is, right, what can we do with these three with our vertical, horizontal and invertical plane? What can we do with them to make sure that we can get them all onto one page flat down? What we would do is this. We'd grab a scissors. If we can imagine, we'll grab, we'll grab a scissors and bring it in at this point right here and cut in along this line right here and we'll stop the corner. So we've now taken this connection away from the blue and the red. It's still connected here to the green and the blue and green are still connected. So the green holds everything together, my vertical plane. I'm going to take then at that stage, I will take my red plane and I will drop it down. And I'd hinge it, this is my hinging line along here, I'd hinge it down until it is perfectly flat and in line with the green. And I'd do the same with the blue. I would, having cut it down here in the joint, I would take it from here and I'd flatten it right out until it's straight in line with the green as well. Just two little terms that we're going to come across quite a bit. The line where the green and red intersect. Where the vertical plane and the horizontal plane, the VP and the HP, intersect along this line right here, we always call it the XY line. Okay, so it's XY. And this line up here is called the YY line. So just two little things to remember the XY line going across on the line of intersection between my vertical and horizontal, right there, that my object is always built upon, is my XY line. And this line right here is my YY line. Another point of note before we move on, the object could have been placed anywhere in this area. I left a specific distance here and I left a specific distance here. Those distances do not matter and they will change for most questions. Now, moving on so and getting this thing unfolded and flat before we start drawing it on paper, I'm going to just Go ahead and I'm going to open out the plane. So I've cut my corner now, I've taken my plane, I've hinged it and I've opened it down into this next position down here. And I want to just label it again down there so that we're sure that is our horizontal plane, our HP. And at this stage I can do some hiding. I can hide away the original plane right here. So that is my HP. I can hide that. I can hide the label of the HP and I can hide the plan because now I'm going to make sure that I've my plane laid down there. I need to add a view onto that plane. I think what's really important is this. You need to recognize that the elevation has to line up with the plan. It's the same object, the same three dimensional object was put in one position and didn't move. So the elevation has to line up directly with the plan. In this case here, I left a 10 millimeter space between the views, but again, as I said previously, that, that spacing is irrelevant. You can leave whatever space you want. Next, as you can probably imagine, we'll be moving on now. And we have already cut the joint and we have got rid of our horizontal and hinged it down and dropped it down flat. We're going to do the same now with the in vertical plane. So <clears throat> the in vertical plane here, I want to imagine now that I'm just taking it and hinging it back until it's perfectly flat and in line with my green vertical plane. So there it is, taken back, hinged into position. I'm going to add my label onto it in vertical plane, EVP. And then I think I can just hide my original EVP. That's already gone, it's used and it's hinged back into position. I can hide my label and I can hide my view and I can just add in the correct ones. So the first and most important thing is this. We want to be efficient in our work. If I was drawing this out on paper, I'm not going to measure again to find the height of the object in my end elevation over here. I'm going to just take my height from the main elevation and I'm going to project it right across and I get the height of the end. Here's the really important one. I want to also take the depth of the object. So we have our length, and our height 
and we have our depth here in plan. Oh, the two dimensions we can see is the height and the depth. I want to transfer them from the plan over to the end elevation. Now, I, I'll get into this a lot more on paper, but this is how it's done. We link all of our views together. And there's a specific method for linking the views together. And this method that I've shown right here, where we come from the plan and we hit our Y, Y line. And we project up at an angle of 45 degrees to hit our X, Y line. Well, that gives me the exact same depth in plan and the exact same shown here in the end elevation. So that's our method for connecting our views. It ensures that we have minimal work, minimal effort, and overall we want efficiency. So if I look straight in now at what I'm looking at, the, whole, the overall drawing, the tree, my three planes of reference is what they are called. The three planes of reference have been unfolded. The elevation of the object is drawn in the vertical plane. The plan of the object drawn on the horizontal and the end elevation looking in at the end of the object drawn on the end vertical plane. This is a completely flat set of drawings. And the great thing about that is we can draw it on paper. Completely flat, just like this. This set of two dimensional drawings right here can be drawn flat on a page. The measurements can be added onto it or the dimensions can be added and it can be sent to anybody anywhere in the world and just from those three views that are drawn flat on that page they can figure out what the object is what is the total length height and depth of the object and where the detail is coming in to the object also now to take it from there we're going to go to our a3 page and we're going to start drawing a starting point for this drawing, so we're going to draw exactly what we just saw in SOLIDWORKS. The starting point for this drawing is from the top of the page, I'm going to come down 135 millimeters. so down 135. And through my page, I'm going to draw the XY line. From the left hand border of my page, if I just extend that line out a little bit more for measuring, for the, from the left hand border of my page, I'm going to come in 90 and just give that a little mark. That's the starting point of my drawing. Down 135 in 90. I've already checked out the object and I know the size that I need to make my planes. My planes need to be bigger than the object itself. Here's the object. Here's the matchbox. That's going to be my first view moving down. That's going to be my second. I'm moving on across here and that will be my third. So I need to create my three views on my drawing page. I know from checking out the measurements of the object here that a good size that would work for me is for the vertical plane I want this to be 150 millimeters long. So from my start point over along by 150 and I want it to be 60 millimeters high. As I previously said the planes can be any size you want. They are an unlimited size. But we want to put a limit on them so that they fit on our page. We don't always have to draw the planes. When we get into the more complex drawings and we start getting used to this topic, we're not going to draw the planes at all. We're going to go ahead straight away and start drawing the views of the object. But for now, we're going to practice with this and draw the planes. We're going to also add our labels. This first sheet is going to be used as a reference sheet to revise on to, or to go back to if we're feeling any way confused. My first plane is called the vertical plane. And I'm just going to put VP beside that. That first plane is now complete. It stands vertically up off the ground. It is started on the X, Y line, and then this line standing up here is our Y, Y line. So we've got X, Y and our Y, Y line. Next, I'm going to add on my horizontal plane. And don't forget, we can't add it on in three-dimensional. We have gone through the process and we have folded it out where it sits flat under my vertical. 
The size for this plane, I want to make it 90 millimeters deep. Once again, this plane is an unlimited size, but we want to put a limit so that it fits on our page. So 90 millimeters works great for this. Just like before, I'm going to add my label and call this the horizontal plane, HP. Finally, I want to add in my end vertical plane over here to the right hand side. I'm going to just extend my XY line a little bit further. Just to keep everything consistent, I'm going to make my vertical and my end vertical the very same height. So I'm not going to measure that again. I'll just project it across. And also, we're going to cut this out after. We're going to fold it up and make it into a three dimensional. So I want to make sure that when I take this line and my in vertical plane, well, that they fold up perfectly together. Now the one way that we can always transfer measurements accurately, this was 90 millimeters. I don't have to measure the next one if I take it at 45 degrees. I know by taking a line at 45 degrees through the corner, I end up with my 90. No measuring required. So my 45 degrees helps me to transfer dimensions from the plan on the horizontal plane to the end elevation on the end vertical plane. Now, more about that later. For now, I'm just going to add in my last note here. End vertical plane. EVP. I'd like to make these stand out just a little bit more, so I'm just going to outline the note with my fine liner here. And we'll outline our XY line all the way across. And the bottom line of my horizontal plane here. And again, we won't do this for most drawings, just while we're new to the topic. left side of my two views my y y line standing up through the drawing so it's the y y line and the x y which goes all the way through and finally the side here of my end vertical plane so there's my three planes if we're thinking back to what we saw in SolidWorks we're going to see the top of the object sitting on this plane moving up we'll see the object sitting on this plane and finally on this plane. I want my object to sit on the XY line on the ground. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to keep it in the centre of the plane so by measuring this object I see that it is 110 millimetres long. My plane was 150 which means I'm going to leave a 20 millimetre space to the left and from there I can mark my total length, 110. Next. That's one of our dimensions, length. Next dimension is the height. And when I measure the height of this, it's 18 millimetres. So, two-dimensional view of a three-dimensional object. And the two dimensions that are visible in this view right here is the length and the height. But now I'd like to maybe add in a little bit of detail. Now, although they can be printed a little bit crooked at times, we're going to just take it that there is a four millimeter margin all around and the inside area for striking the match is four millimeters offset from the outside area so I'm going to just measure up four 
and down four and on the left and the right I'm going to measure in four and four I might lightly to begin and then finally I'll follow it on and go heavy so I'll grab my five edge pencil and do it light and then I can switch to my H pencil for the finished detail Now, next, that's the full view of the front of the object, showing the length and height and showing the design of this striking area in the centre, and showing the overall size of it. I'm going to now work on the plan view of my object, where I can see the total length and I can see the depth of the object. So, as I said, the object does not move. If it doesn't move, that means the view from looking at the front and the top have to line up perfectly. This saves me a bit of time because this time I don't need to measure in 20 and the 110 because it's already done. I did it once, I don't need to do it again. As I said when we were looking at SolidWorks, in this particular drawing I have allowed a 10mm space between the views. which basically means when I was positioning the matchbox I kept it 10 millimeters away from the vertical plane. The overall depth of the matchbox, so we have used our length and height, now I need the depth. The overall depth of this is 65. So from our starting position up there so we've left the 10 mil space and then we go for the 65. On those two marks I can draw heavy lines running the entire length of the object. And I'm just heavy in the left and right borders of the object. There we go. That's our next view finished. We might just add some labels at this stage just so that we're continuing to uh, keep focusing on the key terms that are being used for this topic. So as we looked in at the front of the object, we projected our view onto the vertical plane. The actual view that we draw and the detail we draw is called an elevation. When we look down from the top, we projected our view onto the horizontal plane and the view that we drew is called the plan. So I might just lay it just under here, plan. So that's just a little bit of the terminology before we go ahead and finish this. The next one, we have seen the object from the front, we've seen the object from the top. The last place that we might want to get some detail is by seeing this side. So we look in at the side and we project our view over here onto the in the vertical plane. I'm not going to use any measurements at all to draw the end of this object because the two dimensions I need is the depth and the height. And I've already used those so I'm not going to do them again. There's the height of the object. As I was saying on SolidWorks, that's the depth, 65. There's also a 10 millimeter space right here. I don't want to measure them again, so I will not measure them again. I'm going to project them across to hit the YY line. And up with my 45 degree set square. Really important to use the 45 because no other angle here is going to work. Up with your 45 degree set square here. And here. Now, where those 45 degree lines hit the XY, well, that is the left side of the object and the right side. So 
I'm going to take them up. I know that exactly how high they're going, so they're going up to there. And up to there. And I know the exact height of the box is here. I don't know, I'm not going to see that. So, here we go. And there we are. The end elevation of the box. If I wanted to just verify, the box is 10 millimeters away and then it's 65 mil deep. It's 10 millimeters away, it's 65 mil in depth. So no need for wasted effort. We want to be efficient in our work and we want to keep our accuracy really good as well. So whatever measurements we use in plan, we transfer them, we don't measure again. The name of this view, so we have an elevation on the vertical, we have an end elevation on the end vertical. So if there's an elevation and this is an end elevation. So we've our elevation, our plan, and our end elevation. Now you'll often call this the end view as well. Just a very common term that also uh, is put out there a lot, is that this one is called the elevation plan and end view. But the end elevation is the correct term for that. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to actually go ahead and make this. And to make it, before making it, I'd like to add in, add in some colour. So the colour scheme that we had used there the last time, I had my vertical plane was green. I had my red horizontal plane and I had my blue in the vertical. I'm also going to add the colour in on the object. So I'm going to pause the video for just a few moments. I'm going to let you, you catch up and add the colour in yourself. And after that, then we're going to actually physically make this object. Now, once we've coloured in the different areas of the object, I suppose it just makes it that little bit easier to understand we have our green vertical plane. The blue surround and the brown inside, we have our yellow view on the red horizontal plane, and we've just a white into the box here shown on the end vertical. The final task that we're going to do now, and again, this isn't something you'll do for every drawing. Maybe just when you're at the, at the beginning and you'd like to kind of get to know the topic very well. The final task we're going to do is actually take off our page, cut this out, fold it up, and make this into a 3D object. Again, we're going to make our planes into the 3D planes of reference, just like you saw in SolidWorks back at the beginning. So, I'm going to take off the tape. If all of my labels here, this really important point, all of my labels are contained within the coloured areas. So all of the labels are inside the lines. If you happen to drop your label outside the lines, just move them in because we don't want to cut them off and have them gone. This is a nice little uh, question to keep there. Maybe stick it on it in the lid of your drawing kit and replace it with a, with a much nicer one when you design your own questions and you have something that you prefer to have there. But for now, make sure all labels are contained within the outline of our three planes. Um, going on ahead, so we'll just get this we'll get this guy cut out and um, we'll get it all stuck together and we'll see how it all interacts and works together. Now, what remains is my three planes. To help me to fold these up accurately, what I'm going to do is this. Be careful now you don't tear them at this. I'm going to lay my set square down on the Y, Y line. I take my end vertical. I just give it a little pull up into position. And what that does, that gives us a nice neat fold line. Exactly where we should be folding along the Y, Y. Let's fold it in that little bit further and back out. I'm going to do the same now along my XY line. And as I position my set square right along the XY, take my plane and make sure the set square doesn't slide. And just fold it up into position and maybe fold it all the way through then just once as well. Now, what we might start to see now is this start to see that the whole thing comes together and it comes together pretty much perfectly if your accuracy was good. While I'm here I'm going to grab some <coughs> just a few little bits of masking tape and 
I'm going to use them to keep this object together temporarily. I just turn the line that I said on solid works that I was getting my scissors and cutting. Well, now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to put it back together. I'm going to just put some pieces of tape along that line. And very carefully and accurately fold that tape down. So, after all that, there's my three planes. It's my arrangement of three views of that matchbox. If I drop the matchbox in, we should hopefully see, I might just hold this in with a set square at an angle so that we can clearly see what's happening here. If I drop the matchbox in, you should hopefully see the basis for all of this. So we have our matchbox in there and we can see it looking down on top of plan. We can see as we look in at the elevation and as we look in at the end elevation we see the three views of that one object where we can take a three-dimensional object we can break it down into multiple two-dimensional views we project those views onto our planes and the final step that we've just done right now is we take those planes and we fold those planes out flat and we get an orthographic projection of a three-dimensional object. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed this video and there'll be plenty more to come.